In this video, I'll uncover eight surprising signs that may indicate that you have high blood sugar. High blood sugar is a crisis that afflicts so many people. When we look at worldwide the hundreds of millions of people who are suffering unknowingly from insulin resistance and prediabetes, it's quite scary. And unfortunately, they're living day in and day out as this issue of high blood sugar slowly deteriorates their body. I mean, it really breaks down the body from the inside out and causes serious consequences down the road. Now, a lot of people, they're not familiar with the signs that they need to look for, the blood tests that they need to do, and really don't have any clue as to what they should do next step in order to start reversing this issue. So that's why in this video, we're gonna talk about eight surprising signs that your blood sugar is high. From there, we're gonna talk about some different blood tests that are very important to do in order to determine if this is a problem for you. And then of course, we'll talk about how you can reverse this issue naturally using a nutritional approach. So stick around to the end of this video. But before we get started, I'm Dr. Zorowski and welcome to the channel. If you're new to the channel, it's a pleasure to have you here. Be sure to hit the bell notification and join our notification community and then from there, I'll be able to help you excel your health and your life. Now, what I want to do is first talk about the first issue that I typically see that is a good sign that you have a problem with insulin resistance. Let's go ahead and talk about number one here. And this is fatigue after meals. So ask yourself this. After you eat your meals, do you find that you are just totally fatigued? And if you are answering yes to that, then there's a good chance you're suffering from insulin resistance. Now let's go through the scenario. Let's say you're doing intermittent fasting and that first meal of the day, you just can't function after it. Well, there's a good chance that because you're having this huge blood sugar surge, you're having this huge insulin surge, that it's just wiping your energy right out. Now the other thing that will happen is somebody who's even th eating three meals a day. You know, they, every time they eat a meal, they go in and just find themselves totally fatigued after. Now of course, you can be really fatigued from a meal if you're overeating. And that's not what I'm talking about. If you're just eating a huge meal and crushing yourself, then that's one reason you'll be fatigued. But we're not talking about that. Let's just say you're having an average meal and then you're totally uh, just finding that you have a chronic fatigue issue after that, then insulin resistance is a possibility for you and you need to get checked for that. Let's go ahead and move on from this and talk about craving sweets, okay? This is another major issue. Now there's a couple ways that this can happen if you have insulin resistance. First of all, there's something called the brain reward cascade system. Now, if you're somebody who has insulin resistance, you likely got there from a very poor lifestyle, eating a lot of carbohydrates, eating a lot of high sugar foods, eating a lot of foods that aren't good for you. And when you're eating these foods, the brain reward cascade system basically is gonna release a hormone in the brain that is a feel good hormone. It tells you, hey, I really like that and I'd like some more. It's just like when people are addicted to a certain type of drug. You know, they have that drug and then they crave it more and more. Well, the same thing happens when you crave sweets. The more you have it, the more you crave it. Now another thing happens here though with sweets in particular, and that is when you are craving those sweets, it is because your the, the cell is needing that energy, okay? So what happens here is that you go and let's say you have a meal. Your blood sugar goes up, your insulin goes up, you're fatigued from it, but then the problem is, is the cell didn't get any of that energy. And so as a result, you're craving sweets. So if you have a meal, and you're looking for sugar after a meal, you're looking for a soda after a meal, or looking for something sweet, then that is a sign of insulin resistance. You gotta look out for that, okay? Once we start stacking some of these signs up, if you're falling into many of these categories, then you're definitely gonna want to hear what blood tests that we need to take in order to determine if this is actually a problem, which we'll get to in just a moment. Next here on the list, we're gonna talk about frequent urination, okay? This is a problem too that many people face when they start to have high blood sugar. Now, frequent urination can come from many different things, okay? If you're a male, it can be a prostate issue. And the other thing that you can find is that you are having an electrolyte imbalance, okay? If you have electrolyte imbalances, it can also be a reason that you are running to the bathroom. Now, those are probably two of the top issues that I see people have with frequent urination other than if you have insulin resistance. So if you have frequent urination, what's happening, and it, let's say you have frequent urination and it's related to high blood sugar, it's simply because the blood sugar is high and the kidneys have to deal with it. Because insulin isn't able to get it into the cell, because you have insulin resistance, the kidney is stuck with the issue. And as the kidney is trying to deal with it, it starts flushing out some of that sugar from the bloodstream and along comes with it is water, okay? So you're running to the bathroom all day long, 
all night long simply because you have high blood sugar and your kidneys are suffering as well. Okay, this is why diabetics can also have severe kidney issues. And so we want to make sure that if we're having frequent urination problems, we look into this. Next on our list is going to be increased thirst. Okay, well, this is combined with frequent urination. If you are running to the bathroom all the time, you obviously have a water deficit in the body and you have to start drinking some more in order to make sure that you fix this issue. Okay, so frequent urination is related to increased thirst but increased appetite is something totally different, okay? Now, when you're someone who has insulin resistance, increased appetite is an issue in a couple ways. First of all, your metabolic hormones are all over the place. And there's this hormone called ghrelin. Now, this hormone ghrelin basically is a hormone that tells your body that you are hungry, okay? When you have metabolic instability, you have insulin resistance, I mean, the pedal is down to the floor on this hormone and your body's constantly stimulating it, going, we're hungry, we're hungry, we're hungry. And so as a result, you have that increased appetite, okay? Now, another thing that happens here is that when you have that increased appetite, it's back to that original problem we talked about. You have all this sugar in the bloodstream, but it can't get into the cell, so your body can't utilize it. So you know what? Basically, as a cellular response mechanism, your body is going, hey, we need more energy. So as a result of needing more energy, we need more food. So it's increasing your appetite, okay? So we have to look at increased thirst, increased appetite as a potential sign that we have a high blood sugar problem, that we have hyperglycemia. Let's talk about this one, okay? Difficulty losing weight. You know how many people I come across that like they're trying to lose weight? They're putting in that good effort. They are just pounding it out in the gym. They are just working hard, but they cannot lose weight, right? Well, with the problem of hyperglycemia and insulin resistance comes an inflammatory issue, and it also comes with that metabolic hormone instability that I just talked about. Think of that. You know, think about leptin, the hormone that tells you to stop eating, not telling your body to stop eating, and ghrelin, the hormone that tells you to keep eating, to keep telling your body that you need to eat. Well, guess what? The other problem is, is that your insulin levels are super high. Your cortisol levels are super high. You know what happens when those hormones are really high? It creates the perfect scenario for you not being able to lose weight, okay? So if you're someone who's trying hard, you're putting in that hard effort, and you're not losing weight, this is a good chance that you're suffering from high blood sugar, hyperglycemia, and insulin resistance, okay? This all comes together as a package, and unfortunately, when you look at a lot of these different signs and symptoms, they can't be separated out. They all go together. You know, you get this bundled deal when you have insulin resistance, and this is why if you ever hear me say, you know, if you're not losing weight, it may not be your fault. It's because you have this hormonal instability issue that you need to get fixed up. And a lot of people are trying to fix this by going to the gym and working hard in that way, but it's not happening. So we want to make sure that we're working to reverse insulin resistance, focusing on lifestyle, dietary changes. That's all necessary in order to lose that weight waist versus hips, okay? So we look at your waist versus hip ratio. When you look at the human body, basically your hips should be one of the wider parts, okay? If you look at your body and the waist is the wider part and you have a lot of belly fat, then that's highly correlated to insulin resistance. And the thing is, is that it doesn't take much belly fat in order to be correlated with insulin resistance. Many people are walking around with enough belly fat in order to fall into that category. And so if you look at your body and your belly is larger than your hips, then you're going to want to really take take into consideration what's going on with uh, your belly fat, your weight loss issues, and also realize that if you're having this correlated with some of these other symptoms, you're going to want to see if these blood tests are that we're going to talk about in just a moment are right for you. Next is skin changes. Okay, We could talk about skin changes all day long when it comes to the problem of insulin resistance because the fact is, is these you know, uh, inward body problems, these physiological problems have outward signs. Okay, So basically, your skin is a huge indication of what's going on in your body. Now, people who have insulin resistance have some serious skin changes that start to occur. You know, If I have somebody who comes into the clinic, a lot of times I can look at their skin. They start talking about some of their problems. I can look at their skin and go, oh yeah, they got insulin resistance, you know? simply just by seeing their appearance. So if you have a lot of like red blotchy spots on your skin, if you have a lot of brown dark patches on your skin and your skin's turning like leathery, if you have like different growths on your skin, let's say things like skin tag, that's also a sign of insulin resistance. And then also if you have dry itchy skin, you know these are all issues with getting poor circulation to the skin and as a result of having insulin resistance, your skin changes 
and you have these major issues start to occur. So if you want to get rid of some of these skin problems, we have to fix insulin resistance. It's not that you go to the dermatologist and you start getting all these special fancy creams, it's that you actually fix insulin resistance. And that's a huge problem when we look at any of these health challenges that people are facing today. They go and they get some sort of treatment that is completely unrelated with the actual problem, right? If you're going to a dermatologist and you're getting fancy expensive lotions when you have insulin resistance, it's not gonna do anything. You have to fix insulin resistance first, and this happens to a lot of people. And so skin changes are very common in people who have hyperglycemia. Next on our list is going to be numbness and tingling, okay? I recently had someone who came into my clinic, and they said, Doc, I got numbness and tingling in my hands and feet. I said, well, have you been to your doctor lately in order to get some blood tests in order to check this issue out? No, I have not. And then I said to them, well, what are you doing about it at this point? Well, I'm gonna go to a neurologist as well. And I said, okay, well, you know, have you been been tested for insulin resistance? Have you been tested for that? Nope, nope, nobody looked at that. Now I can look at this individual and it all it took was a set of eyes to realize that he likely has insulin resistance. So one of the things that you'll find that happens with insulin resistance and high blood sugar issues is that you will get numbness and tingling that's intermittent in the hands and feet. And I'm not just talking about like numbness and tingling in one or two fingers or one or two toes. I'm talking about intermittent numbness and tingling that comes and goes throughout the whole entire uh, um, limb there. And so what we have to do if we're having this issue and you fall into many of these other categories here is we have to actually be looking for insulin resistance. Now let's talk about some of those tests we were mentioning. If you want to get tested for insulin resistance, you need to look for a couple things. A fasting insulin test is very beneficial that way you're able to tell how much insulin is in your body. See if that pancreas is just pumping out tons of insulin. Now, the other thing you can get is a fasting blood sugar test, okay? That is also gonna be an indication of you having an insulin resistance issue. And then lastly, HbA1c test is very beneficial simply because it doesn't just show us, you know, over a week or even a month. It shows us over a three month period if your blood sugar has been, on, has been high and what the kind of the averages of high blood sugar during that three month period. So those are all very beneficial tests. These are all things that we actually test for in my one-on-one -on -one health consulting program, which I'll put a link to in the uh, description below. We're waitlisting people right now because we're not open, but when we do, and if this is something you're interested in, you're definitely going to want to get on that wait list. Now, let's talk about some of the nutritional things that you can do as well. Now, first of all, you have to clean up your lifestyle. You have to make sure that you're eating healthy, you're cutting out carbs, you're cutting out sugar, doing things like intermittent fasting, potentially even the ketogenic diet. These are all great things that help lower your blood sugar and also reverse insulin resistance. So we want to make sure that we're implementing all of those things. Put in the comment section down here below what you've done in order to start reversing insulin resistance. I'd love for you to share that with us and also be sure to share this video with your friends because so many people are suffering from this very problem. Now lastly, if you're looking for the best nutrient that you can utilize in order to reverse insulin resistance, I did a full video on this because many people are not aware that you can actually nutritionally reverse this issue. And there's some nutrients that are more powerful than some of the different medications out there for lowering your blood sugar and getting great results. I do a full video on that very topic right here. Check that out so that you can reverse insulin resistance and high blood sugar today. We found out that this information is solid and it works incredibly well.